in St. John. I welcome you into the sanctuary of New St. John. We thank God for this privilege to be able to join you in this social media. Never in my lifetime had I ever expected to be preaching to a, an empty church. We thank God for what it is. Let me open by offering prayer. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fear. Lord, you're the Alpha and Omega, and the keeper of our soul. Many people want to go back to the old normal, but God, you're, try, you're not trying to do an encore. In our lives, you're doing a new thing. We find peace knowing that you are the author and finisher of our faith and the director of our destiny. No matter how deep the darkness, we will bless you, Lord, at all times. And praise shall continually be in our mouth. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the past, we have been dealing with weathering storms in life, weathering storms in life. And so I thought as the series has been continued, I wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you uh, from this weathering storms in life. And I want to share this morning with you developing an attitude that prevails through a storm. It comes out of uh, the book of Acts, the 27th chapter, the 21st, 22nd rather, to the 26th verse. Let me read for your hearing. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of God, whose I am and who I serve, stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul, you must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the life of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men. For I have faith in God, and it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we shall run aground on some island. I want to share with you some thoughts on, as I said, developing an attitude that prevails through a storm. I find it quite amazing how people can be in the same setting, exposed to the same thing, and even share things in common, but have a different view of what they're experiencing together. Even in this storm, Paul held a different view of their outcome than the rest of the people with him on the ship. Here they were together on the same ship, being driven, tossed, terribly shaken by the same storm. But as it related to their perspective on the outcome of the storm, they shared a different view. With the exception of Paul, the crew and the passengers on the ship were consumed by a state of despair such as we are in. And whereas Paul was consumed with hope as he encouraged everyone on the ship to be of good cheer. In spite of how things appeared, Paul encouraged the people on the ship to be hopefully optimistic. He instructed them to be of good cheer. Their situation was still the same, but the way they viewed their situation, this is where they were different. The turning point in which the people on the ship began to believe they might make it through the storm was when Paul challenged them to change their state of mind. Change your attitude, and you can alter your life. 
alter your attitude and you can alter your circumstance. Number one, it begins with a matter of choice. There are many things that are beyond our control. Our attitude is not one of them, regardless of our circumstances. We still have the freedom to choose our attitude. I acknowledge that we not, may not be able to have any control over the choice of being caught or brought into the storm, but we do have a choice in the type of attitude that we will have upon being caught up or thrown into the storm. Paul in verse 22 exalted people on the ship to be of good cheer. The word exalt means to advise. The idea of advising indicates that one has the option or privilege of making a choice. And so Paul advice of attitude for them to endure was that of being of good cheer taking hope and taking heart. The choice was theirs. The choice is ours to choose the type of attitude that will help us make it through the storm that we find ourselves in, the trouble we find ourselves in, and the circumstances that we are in. Number two, my faith must be in God, which may require changing my normal way of thinking. My faith must be in God, which may require changing my normal way of thinking. Where I put my faith determines how much I can withstand. If our God, if our faith brother has been placed in God, our normal way of thinking is bound to change. We begin to think in a matter of no weapon formed against me shall prosper, or weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, or though Christ who gives us the strength, we can do all things. It is clear in the text that Paul had placed his faith in the hands of God. In spite of how rough that storm was, Paul was depending, leaning, and trusting that God was going to bring them through that storm. And that's where our faith should be right now. Leaning and depending and trusting that God will bring us through. Because a storm that appears to be blatantly dooming, we must place our faith in God to get us through the storm evil. And when we do not know how to, the outcome will fully achieve. It is not a great faith that we need, but a faith in a great God. Yes. To develop an attitude that prevails through a storm. Number two, number three, brother, my relationship between me and God must be mutual. The relationship between Paul and God was mutual because God knew Paul. And Paul knew God. Paul said, an angel of God stood by me this night, whose I am and whom I serve. An attitude that prevails through the storm necessitates a relationship with God that is mutual. My brothers and sisters, it's important because it is our relationship with God that gives us the confidence to embrace our storm for we know that our Heavenly Father not only cares, but he watches over us in developing an attitude that prevails through storm. It requires that I establish a relationship with God that is mutual. That means that God knows me and I know God. Number four, my attitude must be fixated by what is essentially important. An attitude that is always looking backwards and focusing on what it does not have will never prevail through a storm. You cannot have a new life 
if you're still holding on to the old, Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. In this text, the angel told Paul that the ship was going to be lost, but no lives on the ship was going to be lost. In the process of the storm, they were going to lose many things but their lives were going to be spared. And so to develop an attitude that prevails in the storm, I have to keep my mind on what is essentially important. Number five, I must believe God. There is a difference in believing in God versus believing God. The devil believes in God, the devil believed that God exists. The difference is that the devil does not believe that God is able to do what God has declared. To believe God is to know with complete assurance that God can and will do what God has promised to do in spite of our circumstances. And here the people on the ship were in the midst of a horrific storm during the darkness of the night. And yet they learned that they were going to be cast on a certain island. The text says, how be it, we must be cast upon a certain island. Regardless of how bad the ship was going to be broken, dismantled, ripped apart, splendor, or torn into pieces, they still were going to be cast upon the island. They were going to make it even on broken pieces of a boat. And so the attitude that makes it through a storm says it does not matter what is going to happen to me. I may be broke, dismantled, ripped apart, splintered, torn into pieces, but I'm still going to make it safely through my storm because I believe in God, I have the right attitude, and I'm trusting in God because it's God who has brought us saved thus far and God will keep us now even in the storm that we find ourselves in. Yes. May God bless you. We're praying for you. And you remember us in prayer as well. God bless you and keep you. Amen.